I'm going for sort of a, a kidney bean type of shape. Uh, this is designed to have a screw going all the way through a giant chunk of metal. I don't have a giant chunk of metal. I've got a relatively narrow piece of mother of pearl. Welcome to Luthier's Tips, Tricks and Training with Crimson Guitars. I am Ben Crow and I like to make things a little bit differently. I like experimenting, pushing boundaries, pushing my skills and uh, filming it to let you guys maybe learn something, maybe see something to take the piss out of. I have got a fairly standard tuner. This is one of the uh, Shala Da Vinci's. I like them. It's going on the hand tool build, which has a mother of pearl nut and will have a mother of pearl saddles. And there's a lot of mother of pearl. Some of you said, Ben, I can't believe you're not making mother of pearl tuning key heads in the comments. This is your fault. I'm going to do just that, but I'm doing it out of some little discs. These discs are mother of pearl, freshwater pearl, something like that. They came on a, a purse or a small handbag that I saw uh, second hand in the charity shop. And I thought, Ooh, one day I'll find a use for them. Today is that day. Burn it. <laughs> These are very beautiful tunes. A little bit heavy. I want light weight. And if I remove that rather large bit of casting, I think I can get there. I'm always on the lookout for materials that could be used or utilized uh, in guitar building that uh, are you know, not normally considered. And jewellery and fashion uh, gives up a plethora of random bits and pieces. It is my opinion that artificial constraints push creativity, push design, and are fun. Fight me in the comments. So the plan is to remove just that section and basically replace it with a, a disc of the Mother of Pearl. It's going to have to be constructed out of a few pieces, though, for strength. The shaft of that is quite long, and it's longer than the, uh, the width of my circle. It also is wider there than the average circle. So I'm going to have to create each of these pieces out of three. Well, that's not design, is it? Let's get cutting, drawing, then cutting, and filing and shaping and sanding and all sorts. Okay, we've got various thicknesses and various, uh, the circles, on some of them, uh, different sizes, and uh, uh, the central holes are off center in some cases. Let's find the right one. Yep, you're it. Okay, this is a little crimson uh, spot leveling file. I'm going to be gluing onto the outside edges of this disc. So that needs to be flat. So it's the first of uh, quite a lot of filing, I would say. Just flatten the whole thing off. This is more ergonomic than a, a standard uh, file with a traditional handle. Yeah, that's the. Uh, that's where the hole is. It is not centered. I'm going for sort of a, a kidney bean type of shape, or at least inspired by. There we go. 
I'm quite happy with that. Time to cut and file, see where we end up. I just broke the blade. First of many. Public safety announcement. When you are cutting with, uh, with this sort of a blade, try and keep the finger that is in front of the blade out of the uh, line of travel. First of all, if you're cutting something like spruce for example where you've got uh, uh, a sharp contrast between the hardness and softness of the grains uh, you can sometimes jump into the soft grain and go an inch or two further than you want these blades they hurt nasty but the worst thing that i've had happen or at least the uh, one of the weirdest with this particular tool is snapping the blade continuing going on and stabbing the broken off piece up at the top here into your finger. Luckily in that case the teeth are pointing down. It isn't barbed, it's gonna come out, but not a fun day. And as much as possible try and avoid bleeding. I'm not sure how many times I've used the spot leveling file as a spot leveling file. Um, almost nil. I tend to do the entire level crown polish. I use it multiple times for random little things like this. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So on the, on the tuner, You've essentially got this shaft here. It's, I'm not sure what that shape is. It's not quite circular. It used to be, but it's got two squared off edges uh, ground into it. And down the center of this section, I'm gonna cut away. And that is going to be what locates on those ground edges so that we can turn the tuning key. I am going to need another piece of material on these faces on either side with a bit of a, a tunnel carved into it. Now I've got a little needle file here, the shaft of which matches uh, or is pretty close to the width I'm going for and I want to have the, the cutout in this central section uh, be perfectly central. I don't want to be turning the key and have it sort of wiggling away. Uh, I also don't particularly fancy trying to measure this. So let's eyeball it with this trick. Because I've got a circle in there, it's very easy for me to put this in place and then adjust it so that I can see that we're lined up and central. to that hole. Far easier, far quicker. Your eyes are a powerful tool. Just double check, so my pencil lines are slightly further away than I would like, but that's good. I know where to cut. I know you are all expecting this to disintegrate on me, or many of you are. It's about three millimeters thick, two, three millimeters thick and it might disintegrate 
It truly might, but it's also fairly substantial material. This is the dangerous bit. Whoop, and he was talking. Gently does it. It's best to ease up on these things. Success. Next up, I require a beautiful little half circle kind of a thing over here on either side. So we need another one of these. He looks good. Same process. Fight it flat, draw the center line, trying to figure out what shape we want. I want to avoid that through hole and I need to line my circle up all nicely. Something like that. I had considered having the other circle drop down but uh, hmm. while this thing is nice and solid I am going to cut a uh, I'm going to cut the groove which requires I'm going to start with a saw so file locates in the initial cut and it goes where I want it to go. At what point does guitar building essentially turn into just creating music based jewellery? Let me know what you think. I'm, I'm happy with this, by the way. I'm having a total blast. So with that section carved, I can basically put the middle piece in place and then slowly sneak up on a, a point where the central bit is deep enough. I don't know why I'm doing this because you, you can't see close enough. So let's... Hold, hold that thought. So that sits in there. That gently goes on there. Oh, I like the idea of that circle going over the edge. Well, look at that in a bit. And actually my, my bit of recessing there is already deep enough given how thick this particular central section is. I like that. So essentially there's going to be a little corner that sits up over, over the edge, giving this thing a lot more 3D-ness. I'm going to cut that excess away and we've got a couple of pretty shapes. 
Come on then. This is lovely material. So I'm trying to go I'm trying to move the saw vertically as much as possible. The trick is to cut as close to the line as you possibly can. I like this. I like this a lot. So those two pieces will sandwich on the outside, giving extra strength. We've got a fitted A fitted socket for the tuner and it's made out of uh, pearl. Woohoo! Are we having fun yet? I am. I, I was. I, I just realized I've got to make five more. <sighs> the time has come to glue so I'm just very gently clean up all gluing surfaces, get rid of any uh, finger grease etc. And since these edges are going to have uh, a bit of an overhang, I want to sort of finish them a little bit. Crimson sanding stick. These things are amazing. So I've got some 600 grit paper on here. And uh, yeah, they will do nicely. Here we go. I'm using some of the uh, new Crimson super glue. This stuff is gonna make a big difference. This is the very, very thick glue. Now, Center yourself, both mentally and physically, don't slide. Okay, there we go. So I've visually lined the circle on this top bit up with the circle there. Uh, a little bit dodgy, but it worked out. We have the beginnings of a custom tuning key. I'm going to let this dry for a bit and uh, then we can move on. I am on to, to cleaning up. The super glue on the outside comes away very, very easily with a, a sculpter blade, a file, a tiny chisel, something like that. Uh, obviously, I have super glue on the inside of the uh, uh, what would that even be called? It's a hole, but it's a shaped hole. I don't know. It's too hot to think right now. Then we can move on to the next stage, because obviously this isn't it. We need a 
bit of a pop of color. And some bevels. I'm going to use a, a crowning file, a crimson crowning file. We've got a safe edge, which runs on there quite nicely. And uh, yeah, that's, well, I'm not surprised that it's working because this is kind of what this file is designed for. Nice. A little bit of super glue in there. But it comes away easily. Now, if you're doing this, be careful. If this section has pushed down and back a little bit, it can, there you go, I've just made that happen, it can lock. I am currently not able to turn that at all. You do not want to disintegrate what you're working on. Make sure that it's free flowing before you test. I need to, uh, I need to clear that up a little bit. We're nearly there. What do you think? Uh, this is designed to have a screw going all the way through a giant chunk of metal. I don't have a giant chunk of metal. I've got a relatively narrow piece of mother of pearl. So I need to, uh, I need to cut that off. This is a, a point of no return. So I've got a, a, a notch there to seat that and a slot for the blade to go through. If you're cutting any tube for inlays, uh, don't use a standard hacksaw blade. Don't use wire cutters or anything like that. A particularly fine toothed blade like this, particularly one where the teeth are uh, closer together than the thickness of the tube you're cutting, it does it beautifully. The problem is twofold. One, I've got an, an empty hole there. It looks kind of boring. Two, it, if that screw is, is held there, we struggle to access the slot to tighten it, which is not a good idea. I propose this. Uh, I have got some turquoise beads these are tiny little stones and I think fitting a little bit of blue in there like that. Well, I think that's going to look rather nice, don't you? Smile and wave, boys. Just nod yes and we'll move on. Obviously, the holes through these beads are tiny and this is raw stone. It's not going to be fun to drill. And this is the hand tool only build. I'm not using power, people. 
less power to the people. Don't quote me out of context. Pin vice with a good sharp bit. And uh, basically, I'm going to be very carefully, very gently scraping this away. These things like to explode. Very gently. Very gently. Screw this thing in. I'm tempted actually to uh, super glue this down. Hmm. If I was using a hand drill, I would. <laughs> Let me put it this way I am getting a lot more feedback right now from the tools. I can feel what's happening and I can stop quickly if required. I do wonder though. Standard uh, watchmaker's screwdriver. Mm. And that's not quite that's not quite doing it. This is a very small customized uh, router bit. The, the stone feels like it wants to scrape rather than drill. So I'm wondering about yeah. Okay, well, this is working. I wonder. I don't want to put a lot of pressure on anything. And I still expect to shatter more than a few of these. Why Ben? Why are you doing this to yourself? For the art. For the art. That's what we started out with. And here's where we are now. But look at the side of the screw. That's not good. Yet more sphincter clenching fear as I countersink that. And I'm not going to use a traditional countersink. I'm going to use this. Aha! So this is a little. Um, saber tooth I think uh, carving burr. I'm going to start out with this burr and then end up with a router bit. This is a this is I could so easily have just ignored this whole thing and pretended that uh, they came with a hole that was big enough and this was just working and and fine but uh, where's the fun in that? So out of all of my countersinks, this one actually does the job and feels like it's not going to disintegrate it. And with the screw sunk properly, we've got a nice round thing. So the whole point of this is to replace the requirement for using a screwdriver at all. And I'm going to do that by gluing the stone in place, like so. And for much of the turning, I can just use the turquoise. This also solidifies the turquoise, so it's not going to uh, run the risk of disintegrating over time. Uh, at, at least that's what I hope. No disintegration. Zero, not allowed, don't happen, don't do it. Okay, so I've got the screw in there because that is recessed. We can wedge up like so. This beautiful thing sits there. 
and then very carefully once you've located the hole she comes together it took a few days and it's been a slightly windy path but I'm very very happy let's have a look things I would do differently pretty much everything pretty much everything I, I would I would make sure that the uh, the floor of my workshop was a little bit uh, cleaner before I started filming for starters uh, okay when I fit the tuners I had I wanted to follow the angle or create a little bit more movement so they go from straight to angle to f more angled from the front it doesn't look quite so cool but obviously uh, everything's a little bit less uh, accentuated when the tuning keys are uh, like so uh, playing around with recycled mother of pearl absolutely fine or river pearl something like that that was fun the stone the stone was a, 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 a yeah that was not fun um, so yeah maybe not next time from the back it looks it looks much better even when they're all nice and lined up in all I am very very happy uh, now I kind of think that I would have preferred to have the uh, semi-circular section to swoop down and follow the shape of the, the tuner potentially and I most assuredly uh, next time around would remove a lot more of these sections we've got this beautiful bat shaped rock it's a it's a spear or it, it's got a lot of momentum to the point and then it's interrupted by the length of these I reckon if I do it so that we pretty much remove that entire central section or flip these on their head so that uh, the keys end where the screw is right now everything's a little bit smaller I think that's what I want to do in the next um, in the next iteration of these uh, tuning key heads I don't, I don't think I'm done I, I'm, I'm whoa light light bring light thank you uh, with this guitar I'm, I'm, I'm going to string her up I'm going to finish the bridge I'm going to finish the build but at a later date when I've got a little bit less on my plate don't send me hate mate unless that is your fate I'm sorry I'm, I'm in a weird weird mood right now and my my my, my you yeah, know long-term project number three the uh, the youngest of my children is currently watching so uh, so I'm in a weird mood I kind of want to make some tuners from scratch at some point too can't be that hard can it can it thank you for watching please click like subscribe please in the comments let me know what you would do differently uh, if you've done this sort of thing before what did you do have you got links please share them uh, the thing that takes a custom guitar and makes it a custom guitar isn't the simple fact that it's been made by hand to order it is the final fine details and you don't have to sit down and just accept what the big manufacturers of hardware are giving you play have fun do something cool do something interesting and even if it doesn't work you'll still have done something cool and interesting. Yeah, see you soon. Goodbye.